As much as it's fun to say derp or derp cheese, it was a very well executed cheese. Trap had no answers on the back. Series now is tied 1-1. A win is a win is a win. Who will bring it to two in this final game? In the bottom right hand corner, if he can get to mid and late game, he's known to be unstoppable. Can he get there today? It is Saul's trap! And his opponent. Here a cannon, there a cannon. Everywhere a cannon, cannon. His cheese is immaculate. It is a man known as Genius. I can't get over that. <laughs> wow. Man, you're down 0-1 and you choose the cannon rush of all things. And especially on Yan Su, it's like the map that you would expect it the most and trap just it slipped by his mind. I know he knows about that build. Inches away. I mean, it's oh, one of the, uh, it, it's the build order that, you know, we talk about. It's the thing you lose to once and then you never lose to it again. It's so easy to scout and stop instantly. A little bit of it is building yeah. placement. A little bit is just angling that probe a smidge. And he even sent the probe out to check for any proxies. So it, in his mind, he was thinking, yeah, my opponent can cheese me in the early game. It just Again, slipped his mind that it was Photon yeah. Kins, and I don't think Trap will ever die to that. Oh, man. Oh, wait, no, that's his probe. Oh, yeah. You, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> I was like, Jesus, Genius. <laughs> You're crazy. Well, it looks like Genius is doing the unthinkable. He has a second geyser. He's, not, he's gone insane. He's going to do a very standard build, but I mean. What a cheeser. But Trap has been hyperactive with his scouting. Genius is doing super standard scout timings. He's scouting after Cybercore. He's just going to see what's up right as his opponent's core is done. Very standard, standard scout timing. Yeah. If you send the probe right as your, oh. your core finishes. You liar, Dana. Really? Oh, my God. You are such a liar. This is going to be a Twilight Council Dark Templar opening. Or Blink Stalker. Well, three in gas is going to be a big signal, but Genius did a brilliant move here. Does He's... he put down a fourth pylon, though? That's the question. I would love him to put down yeah. another pylon right now to fake that everything's okay. You shouldn't be looking over here. Ooh, it looks like Sentry is the choice for Trap. It generally implies he wants to be going for an early expand. Genius is going to be going for a Twilight Council, which generally implies Dark Templar. Ooh. This is going to be interesting. I mean, the, the Twilight Council should be kind of suspected at this point. No! No, he's not going to do this. Trap. Oh, my goodness. Trap! He sees it! Boom! Hello! And Trap himself is getting a Twilight Council. Now this is the situation. Oh, this is a situation where you can switch over to Blink Stalkers at this point, but yep. uh, it's still, whatever you choose is going to be tough because if you go for Blink, instantly it's going to be scouted out. The probe is still staying around there to see if there's any Chrono Boost being allocated. It poked in and it saw, okay, nothing is being worked Ooh. on. Blink is being worked on for Trap. An additional two gateways will go down alongside the Dark Shrine. Now, this is interesting. Why do you think three gates? and not two in some transition. Because it's not going to be Dark Templars. It's going to be Archons. Oh, Archon. Genius will get picked off a little bit here. Hallucinated Phoenix is going to get into yes. the main and spot absolutely everything. Oh, uh, this, this, uh, this Hallucinated Phoenix is probably the most important unit right now in the game. Once you see three gateways, you're saying, I do not need to expand all that fast. What Genius wants to see is that natural being thrown down ASAP, but you see three gates, and it's like, you don't need three gates to make Dark Templars that fast. That could have been an expansion. You want to put pressure on me. The only way to do that is to merge an Archon and go for it. I don't think that's going to be... Go, oh, oh, recall. Whoa, whoa, and a, whoa. An uncharacteristically defensive play by Genius, who's taken the opportunity to Dark expand. Templar. Love this. DT is out. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No Observer. 
Okay. Traps the, he, trap, trap. No, oh! he missed it. Oh, God, the Observer on the way, 20 oh, seconds away. Nice force shield, though. At, that's kind of what you want to do. Uh, observer is almost oh, done. Trap God. with an astounding defense in this position. Did he zero really kills, not zero lose kills. anything? If he loses nothing, he's going to lose one. And one that's it. probe? Are you kidding me? What an amazing play and immaculate defense. That just never happens in my games, Day 9. <laughs> Genius has already begun to prepare the transition. Blink getting chrono boosted. He is desperate to get this out. The stalker count dead even. But Genius is quite a ways away from Mothership Core. He's a full minute almost. And with more units getting morphed in, I do think Trap is going to be able to apply some serious pressure to this push. Attacking the Nexus first, you want to do that so that there's not as nearly as much HP. When that Photon Overcharge hits, he doesn't know that that Photon Overcharge is a little bit away from here. Oh, nice now, time warp. Blink is almost finished for Genius, losing a Stalker already, trying to engage this. But no, he's just now going to re-attack the Nexus and should go down from here. Photon Overcharge is wow. impossible now with that time Genius, warp going down. he's going to sacrifice it. He knows there's no way it's going to go down. Trap has managed to stay alive. Fourth gateway for Genius, a desperation move. At this point, I mean, it's so hard for Genius to actually pull this off. Now Zealot's going to head the charge. And Blink Stalkers, what can they do? Blinking all the way back, saying, no, do not want this engagement. And he will probably cancel. There it is. Uh, at this point, I mean, it gets a little bit hard. I think he's just going to go by the council. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is always a nice pickup. You delay any transition to more efficient Templar tech, to uh, Zealot tech, so you essentially lock your opponent into going for a Robo, because of course Genius does need to worry about potential um, Dark Templar as well, so Sorry. Trap likely going to be just chrono boosting Immortals and safely expanding. The correct way to do it, and Genius, I think he's going to be doing something very similar in this case. Now, we were talking about how on Yonsu, <laughs> and we went into the end game stage, which that's kind of silly of us, I guess, now. But on, on Polar Knights, it's a lot better, I think, to go Immortal Archon on this map. In the yes. middle of the map, there's very open stages. We can oh, just yeah. mount the perfect concaves. And even denying third bases, where are you going to take your third base realistically? If you're going Colossus, it has to be the back right, because any other position, you're looking at a really tough flank, or you're going to be harassed all over your main, your third base. Things get out of hand. Oh my god, Genius knows how Trap is going to respond to him so well. Genius has gotten the probe lead, has thrown down his expansion very riskily, almost immediately, right after he lost it. He, it. he knows that Trap is playing on the back foot, and Trap, even though he has this single Immortal, suddenly can't just defend with it. He must attack. Is there going to be enough for a Photon Overcharge? Yes. This could be a, a crisis for Genius. I really have no clue how he's going to deal with this. Uh, I mean, Trap, again, what, it, just like game number one, he gets himself into a situation where he's over-defending a little bit too much uh, uh, against Genius. Oh, wait, no, that wasn't game number one. Never mind. But still, like, he over-defended this, uh, this first attack, and now he's in a situation where, uh, you know, he's behind. It's really unfortunate. And I like this decision for Trap to go straight for the plus one. He's going to be transitioning into Immortal Archon. He essentially said, oh gosh, I made the Immortal too quickly. That means that since you expanded and probed up, I'm gonna have the Immortal leave. I'm gonna dedicate to this. And look at this, with almost no money trap, he's immediately throwing down two assimilators. So he definitely wants to go way far up the tech path. He's nearly certainly gonna be up against Colossus. And now that he sees the Robo Bay, it confirms it. So trap is gonna be going into what he does best. Standard late game play. There's the charge coming up on the Twilight Council. And he's probably so happy to see this style coming out of Genius. Now, mm -hmm. it's not to say that Colossus styles are all around just obsolete. They still have their place over here. They still can be played <laughs> where if Trap makes a single yeah. mistake, he's dead. Yeah, no, I mean, any Protoss players who are in the audience today know that Colossi are still pretty good. <laughs> still pretty, pretty easy to lose to on the ladder. Easy to win with on the ladder. But at this top level, I really feel like the, there's a higher potential for Immortal Archon. Absolutely. At the mid-game stage, you can just supercharge your economy. And normally, 
Protoss has had this, this tough transition. What do I go after that, after they get, you know, 10 Colossus or whatever it might be? And now the solution is the Tempest. It's just such a, a, a very cost, or excuse me, supply efficient way of dealing with the Colossus directly and instigating fights so that Colossus Ooh. are attacking into you. Now, if Trap gets an eighth gateway, he's definitely looking to do timing push. Six gates is, is generally the standard. I want to both get some economy and do my thing. But seven kind of implies that Trap is still a little leery, he doesn't really know exactly what Genius is doing. So it's a very cautious play and is going to match caution with more caution, taking the bottom corner. Very smart play, especially with those immortals that dish out so much damage to rocks. Yeah, these back bases are just one of the most instrumental parts of this map, I think. Uh, this is how you really play things out. Now, Archons are going to be merged in. Blink Stalkers are active on the map for Genius, though. He can do a little bit of poking and prodding. He's choosing to be a lot more defensive so far there in the third base. He's going to be chosen for Genius in the mid-right-hand position. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not looking forward to the, how Genius defends this position. This is a tough place with Warpins at the main base. If you, have, <laughs> if you have to send any amount of units back to your main base, you're looking in a very tough position in that uh, you have no good way to defend against large surrounds. Trap is playing so defensively. He's already re-preparing for DT play. Plus two is en route, and this is the exact timing that you want to go for. It. Right as the roboing player is getting up his third base, you begin to assault from both sides. There is enough on the mothership core to do the easy recall, but Trap is actually leaving that defensively. I'm not so sure how I feel about that. Genius isn't taking a third. He's doing a two base all in. Do you think so? Whoa. I do. With the pylon placement all on the right hand side now, additional two gateways popping up here. I really feel like he's just gonna, he's gonna drill in. And this is very difficult. Now, he does have the supply lead currently, but Trap can oh, evenly, wow. or can very quickly, okay, the third goes down. I'm surprised it was so late. Yeah, I mean, Genius had a fairly wide window to throw that down, and wow, Trap knows these transitions so well, going straight for that Stargate. Tempest are going to be the choice. Both players have max energy mothership core. The towers can't quite see the other towers, so Trap's got to be very cautious. But this mothership core moving away, this is the time when Trap wants to strike. He's spending almost all his minerals on more infrastructure, on more bases, trying to continue to power forward with his economy. But soon enough, all those minerals are going to be in big zealot warpins. The third, almost no way that's going to oh, be staying gosh. alive. And Genius needs to move into position right now. It's a little bit tricky. Remember that photon overcharge, if it pops up there, it will cue the AI to start uh, for a lot of units to start attacking it. That's yeah. a great way to just control the amount of HP. Oh, easy free Templar, an expensive loss for Genius. Just backing up from here. He has his third base, and he is teching over to Tempest. I don't think he ever wants to really engage here. As uh, the as trap in this position, you actually want to filter your zealots out as best as possible. Yes, yes. Zealots are like oh, the, no. the wrong... Oh, wow. Is he really going for this attack? And he's just faking it. But yeah, he needs to get rid of the zealots because they don't mean a lot in this composition. The Archons are yeah. much better tanks. Then you got the Immortals behind that. And then you want to be filling that with more Immortals more uh, Archons, and more Tempests as well. Gosh, I am just deeply impressed with Genius's ability to have wiggled his way all the way around on all these techs, have lost his expansion right at the start of the game, and then boldly re-expanded and formed a path back to this nice standard mix. I mean, he has five Colossus, and he has once again reached the money mix of the late game. The Archon Colossus Heavy Force with just enough Zealots to disrupt the enemy. There is a timing before the Tempest count gets pretty large here, and that's where Genius really needs to go. However, he's still pretty zealot heavy. That affects him too. He doesn't want to be zealot heavy either, but he has this momentum swift where he, uh, shift where he can sweep out everything on the ground if he plays his cards right and then keep just pushing in more and more and more ground units, oh. zealot stalkers, and try to get the momentum with the Colossus still alive, hopefully before the Tempest count isn't too high. But with the Tempest at a good four to six, it's almost impossible yep. for those Colossus to really make wow. their, their money worth it.
Genius taking a very brave fourth base. The Tempest can make short work of that, but Trap also leaving oh. the Tempest in his main base to pick off any Warp Prism, which is the exact plan Trap has. Trap's going to drop in the main with the Archon there in that force. He can easily thwart any Zealot reinforcements while crushing with reinforcements of his own. No, excuse me, no additional gateways have been added for Trap. He's stuck on seven. He really wants to be closer to 10, 12 to be more effective with those warpins. Mm -hmm. But right now, Genius has made himself very vulnerable. There's not enough supply left for Genius to warp in defensively. It's so brutal at this point. And there's going to be six Tempests out on the field now pushing into the main base, warping in. What can Genius reasonably oh, do against no. this? He can only warp in one Zealot at a time. Oh. <laughs> this is just free pickings right now for Trap. Genius stuck at 192 supply. And that's why he's going for it to clear up some supply. But the uh -oh. Tempest on the high ground, look at how fast they take out those Colossus. And he targeted down the Sentry. Okay. Picking off anything they can. Right now, the edge far in Trap's favor with this tactical play. Okay, Genius. Dark Templars. Oh, what's Genius going to do? Dark Templars are merging in there. He doesn't have anything to deal with Dark Templars. That's going to help out. Killing the Archon and sweeping up the rest of the units. So Genius getting the right composition to defend there. Strong defense. And like you were saying, Trap needs an opportunity to weed Zealots out of his final force. How is he going to do it? With these small counterattacks. He can pick up a Nexus here. Still a very tense three base versus three base situation, but Trap is rapidly approaching the undestructible money mix. Five more gateways coming oh, in for Trap. Yes. That's perfect. Now he has a way to actually spend his bank. That's the perfect way to continue this attack. And look, Genius is now taking that note and saying, OK, we're going into this phase. Let's start trading things out as well. Targeting down the High Templars, he will be able to get, looks like both of them. Uh, maybe. Zealots move over to the third base. Not much will happen of this. Crazy but series of back and forth. Well, how do you point. feel about uh, losing some of your probes in this stage. Income tab shows 48 to 49, so they're on pretty low probe count as it is. That's about what you gotta stick on. I mean, it's essentially a two base economy with enough to populate mm. six gas. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Oh, Tempest getting some big shots, only on Stalker so far. You can six. see how low they actually damage non massive units. But as soon as they touch those Colossus, man, oh man, it gets scary. Now there's a very odd switch transition you can pull where you get the second Robo and the Robo Bay in Trap's shoes. If this army dies, Trap begins to replenish with mass Colossus two at a time. Yeah. And there's not really that much a genius can do about it. Trap exploiting this terrain. Oh, Magnificillion, a nice time, time warp. warp. Gonna pick off at least an Archon. Oh. You know, he's going to severely freak out at least an Archon. Down to one health. Trap's continuing to do these minor engagements with Zealots. Five Zealots, that's it. Man, I, I do want to comment on that second Robo. I love that choice so much. Tempests are great against this composition, but when you have the big trade, Tempests are not good at being remade. It takes a very long time. It's a large amount of commitment to minerals and gas, and you don't see it. So a lot of times there's just a big momentum shift for oh, oh. nice one Colossus falls. Will Archon number two go down? Archon, yeah, okay. <laughs> and taking out a couple more shots. Is he gonna look? Keep drilling this home? No, he's not. That's a lot of Archons in that composition. But man, oh man, those Colossus die so fast. Trap is doing a good job overall. I feel like he needs a revelation in this army just so that his Tempest can run a little bit more free. The Oracle obviously provides just so much coverage, but now oh my Genius, God. he's moving on in, and this is a tough engagement to have. Colossus goes down instantly. Target fire on all of those Colossus, perfectly done. Just sniping them before any major engagement. That is 24 supply that you will not see ever do anything in this engagement. What great play right here by Trap. Slowly whittling away Genius's army. Starting to attempt to move forward. Genius has taken himself another base, but Genius is rapidly replenishing everything with Archons, Stalkers, the perfect units for this kind of engagement. But gosh, this is so difficult. Genius has opted to move in from the left, but all of his Archons are stuck in the backside. Trap's engagement angle is oh. far superior. And he even has the warpins right there. Zealots spring into action. They don't tank very long, but enough 
to kill everything that Genius oh, has. Trap a clinic in late game PvP. Double Colossus transition directly after this. He has no Colossus for himself. GG! Genius taps out. Trap with a fantastic game three play. The scout on the DT at the start. Picking off the expansion and holding strong, ladies and gentlemen. The second round of 